would it be possible to go to Mars with a modified Soyuz spacecraft like it is shown in the TV series for all mankind where North Korea actually succeeds in sending a person to Mars where the person seems to survive for multiple months. When we look at the Soyuz spacecraft then we see that its design includes 30 man days of life support. And even though the spacecraft is capable of carrying three people, these 30 man days means that the spacecraft can actually provide only 30 days for a single person living inside of it. And uh, in this time span of a Mars journey, this amount which would be needed to sustain life of a human being is just much longer. We are talking about a year and we take into account the time to travel there and then the time to live there until the North Korean guy is being found. And uh, the guy actually is not on the edge of dying because he has enough resources and enough power to uh, go out around his spacecraft and even aim with his gun at the arriving American Soviet group which comes to visit his spacecraft. One um, major design change which could dramatically increase the lifespan uh, of such a, a spacecraft in terms of energy and heat supply would be a nuclear battery. A use of a nuclear battery similar like in Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft could provide enough energy and enough heat for a long trip and the spacecraft also shouldn't uh, be relying on any solar panels which could save some uh, weight and some energy but on the other hand of course there is the story of radiation. If you have such nuclear batteries for a longer times close to your body, then this could affect your health. You could get radiation sickness. Just like a little bit, it happened actually to some people a lot uh, during the Chernobyl atom electro like station disaster in 86 and uh, this person does not really seem to be suffering from radiation since uh, we can see that he has like a full mustache so if he will be receiving more significant doses of radiation then he will suffer from hair loss which isn't the case but on the other hand, oh, all the people on Mars in that TV series seem to do just fine with the radiation. None of them have any uh, bunkers below the ground where they will be protected from the radiation from sun and outer space. They live there for extended periods of time and the only incidents where radiation is being mentioned as some kind of problem 
is when it comes to the baby of the woman who gets pregnant on Mars. That's like the only incident where she has uh, some health issues. But other than that, no problems at all with radiation. And that is uh, being considered quite a long leap. Of course, it needs to be taken into account that uh, there have been incidents of uh, religious people who live by themselves for a long period of time in pretty much self-isolation. So this mental aspect of being alone for a year is not such a far leap of science uh, fiction. It's actually something that they could really manage and considering that North Korea has these bodyguards of Kim Dynasty who are really undergoing very harsh training and have been brainwashed very extremely, it can be assumed that North Korea would manage to really educate a person and build up uh, qualities which are needed to sustain this loneliness. In East Asian cultures, it is also um, more common to sacrifice yourself for the society or for a higher godlike being. A very uh, famous example are the kamikaze attacks by Japanese where there was almost a certain death expectation and yet a fair amount of people did these attacks and a reason that motivated them was the godlike being of Japanese emperor and in North Korea they have also a godlike cult around the Kim dynasty so this could be a motivation to do so and considering that in our timeline Mars 1 is actually a project which intends to do exactly what North Korea did in the TV series. Just send people to Mars with a one-way ticket and a lot of people apply for that project. Uh, it really shows that um, such a thing could happen. It's really very tough to say how the person in the Soyuz aircraft would deal with food and water but at least air is not such a big problem because it can just be recycled and uh, Soyuz spacecraft can be also pretty spacious when compared to Apollo command model it has actually more interior space and it has multiple compartments which when used very very efficiently could uh, really maybe f uh, provide the possibility of surviving in there for a long long period of time and living in very bad conditions and also eating some very very mm, limited amounts of food. But considering that North Korea has uh, a ton of experience in keeping its people alive with almost nothing to eat, it could be really a real shot to get there for them with very little food. And maybe that person who is there on Mars, a North Korean, um, person is running out of food maybe he is on the verge of starving it should also be considered that even though there is just this one spacecraft 
which was sent there. Maybe there are other spacecrafts nearby, smaller designs which cannot be tracked by other space agencies, smaller designs which are very simple and uh, are really used for carrying food and supplies. That could maybe be the case. We will see when the next episode comes out. Certainly this turn of events is a really very very mind-blowing um, TV series incident and one of the best things that has happened in recent TV um, series history. So really a great job from the writers to go for that. On some points it's kind of tricky. It uh, is maybe a, a difficult jump in assumptions, but there are so, certainly a lot of points which also uh, can be considered feasible. And uh, such a mission, of course, could also include the element of a hope to meet other people because North Koreans very clearly knew that other people, other nations were going uh, to Mars and maybe uh, their communications equipment broke down. Maybe the idea was to just get there and then just communicate with uh, other teams because it most likely is not a coincidence that the North Korean spacecraft landed on Mars relatively nearby to the other space missions. It's I think not a not a coincidence. They were counting on it. Considering that a lot of other missions, uh, unmanned missions to Mars, landed very very far away from the landing site so far away that they were not even considered an option. And of course, due to the limited resources, due to a lack of a space vehicle, uh, I mean a vehicle like a rover, not a space vehicle, uh, you know, something with which the North Korean could drive around and search. Uh, there is also like no reason for him to go around and look for somebody if his communications equipment is broken. And uh, totalitarian regimes have a very long history of covering up their failures. And that's why North Korea would not say a single thing about the fact that they sent a man to Mars. But, taking into account that the man is still alive, we can assume that they really gave him enough resources to survive and at some point to meet up with other nations on Mars and then just hitchhike a ride back to Earth. Because if the goal is just to go to Mars and just to be there for uh, some time, just to, and the goal is just to uh, put as first nation a step on the Mars, then there is no need to put great effort into providing resources needed for surviving on Mars for multiple months after landing. A very uh, difficult story point of course is that uh, with not a single word before 
has been mentioned a manned North Korean space program. So there is not a single word about North Korea succeeding doing something like Yuri Gagarin did. Like just sending a man to space and letting him survive in a spaceship for some hours. All we know is that North Korea in For All Mankind 90s timeline is actually struggling to send a spacecraft unmanned or manned to space to low Earth orbit for example because the only previous incident we see on the show of North Korean space program taking any form is the junk that flies around the rubbish which is created by some kind of space accident well it's tough to say if that could be feasible but taking into account that mars one intended to do exactly that it could be an option anyway very nice show very great turn of events and let's see what future episodes will tell us thank you so much for watching